their sound. And so I'm going to share with you the video that I... So we should all mute. Every single step, it's it's okay. Reclaim co-host. There we go. Okay, so this is the yes. Everybody should mute. Um, and you now see my screen. And wow, this was. Thank you for your patience and thank you for sticking around because this is a really wonderful poem. So uh, this this uh, YouTube has the song uh, following the score. So my screen sharing is paused. You see the screen, right? Okay, I, I just don't, oh, okay, it doesn't like the full screen. Um, so you will see a line by line, you'll see the score. So you can not only hear how wonderful this piece is, but you can also read, read the text, which is of course the point of what we wanna do today.
So, That's so gorgeous. <laughs> That's so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Now, yeah. it's interesting that Andrea's first comment, because she played this for us, but I guess she hadn't heard uh, the Hal Leonard, you know, because this is not a choir. This is a group of professionals brought together to do the demo. And, uh, you know, those of you who read music and, and you know, those of you in the choir are familiar with the score, right? She changes the tempo all the time, right? There's different metronome markings. And her comment was, boy, they really changed the tempo a lot. It's like, <laughs> okay, you kind of wrote it that way. So what I would like to share with you now is, and I'm just going to make this uh, a little bit bigger so I have a chance to be able to read it. And so I, uh, I wrote Andrea. She had shared with us uh, at uh, in our session that uh, she was in communication with Mr. Ayat, the, the poet, and um, obviously they had a lot of conversation. And so he shared, and I'm going to share it so you can see it while I, I read it. And so he writes, apropos the poem's genesis, I wrote it up on a Welsh mountainside at a Celtic encampment called Caimabon near Jan Beris, where I was leading an initiatory, initiatory ritual retreat, whatever that is. There are, of course, many elements to the writing of any poem. In this case, I had just been commissioned by Mark Rylance to write and read a poem at the new Shakespeare's Globe Theater for the 400th anniversary of the very first performance of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Caesar. Reading the poem alone on stage without a mic to an audience of about 1,500 people had been a profoundly moving event for me. I was born without a roof to my mouth, no soft palate. My mother's milk apparently ran down my nostrils when I was fed, and my, my parents were told I wouldn't be able to speak properly and that I would never, ever sing. So having my way through made my way through childhood neglect and abuse, adult isolation, breakdown, recovery, and eventual redemption, I was ripe to appreciate the depth of the journey I had made, a journey that had brought me from a kind of hopeless grunting to singing my own words alone on the stage of Shakespeare's own theater. I was working in a rehab center at the time using poetry, story, and ritual to help men and women who were desperate not to expose their shame and or wounds, i.e. the very things that had driven them into addiction into, in the first place, but who were often bravely descending into their own dark places to clean up and heal themselves. In so doing, they discovered that they were sensitives, artists without an art, if you like, with a little help and encouragement they began to create and produce art and artifacts that spoke of their deep and often terrible journeys with great art and compassion. I was also beginning to work in the corporate sector, working with senior executives, teaching presence work, leadership, and authentic performance to men and women who were often cynically convinced that authenticity was something you needed to fake if you were to succeed. The core of the piece is the line about descending to the, quote, the last dark hiding place and the empty core that we fear we will find when we begin to peel away the layered onion of our personalities. It was a thing that I had faced myself and helped addicts to face in their turn. It was also something that I knew the world leaders needed to do, though I have yet to find a way to help them. So... I, I, I thought this was aston an astonishing story, you know, uh, imagining the, the, the speechlessness and, and that speechlessness turning into, um, turning into this amazing experience on the Shakespeare stage. So I am going to uh, share a link. Can you send us that poem, that uh, speech that he made? What? Sorry? Can you send us that speech that you just read? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. Um, we'll come back. Um, I'm going to put right now in the chat, other people's computers are just, it's its weird how different it is. Yeah. So I'm going to put a link in here, which has the text of the poem. 
Uh, if you're on a computer and you're able to open up that window and have two windows, the Zoom window and the text, uh, then yeah. you can uh, see it at, at the same time as um, we listen to uh, Mr. Ayat read, Anyone Can Sing. Okay, so I am... Yeah, it, it's really hard to do that on a tablet. Um, but you can do that on a computer. You may have to with share. Uh, Zoom tends to to uh, ch tends to change your uh, your display to full screen. So you have to on the top right exit from full screen and make that window a little smaller if you want to see both windows at the same time. So I'm just saying. Notice that reading the poem takes a minute and under a minute and forty seconds. Uh, the song, and we'll listen to this recording later, is four and a half seconds. The one that we heard that Hal Leonard has is is more, um, four and a half minutes, sorry. The, the one that Hal Leonard is more like five minutes. So here is Mr. Uh, Ayat reading his poem. Anyone can sing. Anyone can sing. You just open your mouth and give shape to a sound. Anyone can sing. What is harder is to proclaim the soul, to initiate a wild and necessary deepening, to give the voice broad, sonorous wings of solitude, grief and celebration, to fill the body with the echoes of voices lost long ago to bravery and silence, to prize the reluctant heart wide open, to witness defeat, to suffer contempt, to shrink, lose face, go down in ignominy, to retreat to the last dark hiding place where the tattered remnants of your pride still gather themselves around your nakedness, to know these rags as your only protection and yet still open, to face the possibility that your innermost core may hold nothing at all, and to sing from that, to fill the void with every hurt, every harm, every hard-won joy that staves off death yet honours its coming, to sing both full and utterly empty, alone and conjoined, exiled and at home, to sing what people feel most keenly, yet never acknowledge until you sing it. Anyone can sing. Yes, anyone can sing. Hmm. So one of the first things that you notice is... Yeah. Anything? His accent. You're muted, Anne. Sonorous. Sonor. Well, okay. Was His accent. Uh, yeah. Was uh, was it the same text as you saw in the sung version? No. No. Had, no, no. It was no. filler. It no. made more sense. There were a lot more lines. Okay, so here I go sharing again. Uh, this. Okay. And we're going to go up to the top of my page. So here is the full poem, right? So hopefully everybody can now see. Is the is the mm -hmm. is, is it large enough? Yeah, make it larger. Uh, I I can make it larger. Uh, okay. Okay, but you should be able to shift the the windows on your computer as well. Okay, so so one of the things that, that so I'm just showing you 25 lines, right? It's a 25 line poem. Mm -hmm. It doesn't rhyme, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't rhyme. Uh, notice, notice, and this is I copied this from his website. So if you click that link, this is what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, very few capitals, right? It's it's almost a a, a there's no periods. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of commas, some dashes, but there's there's uh, anyone can sing, period. Open your mouth, give shape to a sound. Anyone can sing. And now we have colon. And then there's this long, 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 long list. Yet never acknowledge until you sing it, period. Anyone can sing, period. Yes, period. Anyone can sing. So um, there's a lot in here to unpack. And so as I looked at it, I did a couple of things. First, to me, actually, before I do that, if, and if, if you were to read this, 
would you just read it like that without straight through? I mean, I don't think he did. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't want to take the time to uh, break it into, into the number of lines that he groups together because he, you know, he, he read it like it was prose really. Mm -hmm. really. Right. So if we were to break it into groups of lines um, for me, mostly it, turns out to be couplets, not completely couplets, pairs of lines. Um, and really looking at this, it's almost like, why is this not three lines, right? Because because of the periods. And I suspect, if you recall, we looked at the song, the song starts with that, that idea of anyone can sing, right? It starts and ends with that same idea. It's bracketed with that. It's the poem is bracketed with anyone can sing. Yes, anyone can sing. And this opening is bracketed with those anyone can sing, anyone can sing. And so I suspect that that was part of what uh, led Andrea. And remember, her song is also it's through composed. The only thing that comes back is that anyone can sing idea that I think comes directly from the poem. So I'm going to scroll down. And let's just ignore for now um, any of the colors or the bolds or anything like that. I'm going to have to make it, uh, let's see if I can make my window. Yeah, I'm going to have to make it just a little bit smaller because I can't see it all on, on one screen and I'd really like to. Okay, so to me, I feel two lines, two lines, um, I had a lot of trouble with to prize the reluctant heart wide open. So anyone can sing. You just open your mouth and give shape to a sound. Anyone can sing. Anybody argue, you know, feel that, that it's, that's not, a, that's not a section, uh, you know, a couplet in and of itself. I think you that's. Know, knowing that he couldn't open his mouth and talk, knowing that this gives it so much more meaning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also, you know, as as um, I mean, it also spoke to me because my philosophy through the years of, of teaching, uh, doing children's choirs, doing primarily non audition choirs is is I do believe that anyone can sing, not necessarily right away. <laughs> and, and, and some people it takes longer than others to to get to where they they sing. And sometimes a choral, you know, a choral setting is not necessarily where you can learn how to sing. But I do believe that that everybody, anyone, can learn to sing. There's a there's a very small percentage of people who are truly, truly tone deaf and don't distinguish. Um, but many fewer than the people who tell you, "Oh, I can't carry a tune." So, what is harder is to proclaim the soul, to initiate a wild and necessary deepening. To me, that's a couplet. To give the voice broad, sonorous wings of solitude, grief, and celebration. To fill the body with the echoes of voices lost long ago to bravery and silent. To prize the reluctant heart wide open. And really this, if, if it ended right here, it would be a beautiful poem. And so what I have bolded here is the different parts of of, of a person, right? Mouth, soul, voice, body, heart, right? He talks about all those body parts, the different things that the different body parts. And I guess that I, I'm pretty sure that to prize open is spelled P-R-I-S-E, but word apparently does not know that that's a word because it wants me to put a, a Z in here, which I'm pretty sure that's not how that is spelled. And so I I ch I had a challenge here, whether this went together. This is this mistake. I this space right here between to retreat and to shrink. It wouldn't let me put it back up. So there's an extra space there. So we prize the the reluctant heart wide open. And what does that wide open heart is? It's asked to do, to witness defeat, to suffer contempt, to shrink, lose face go down in ignominy to retreat to the last dark hiding place. So to me, this is, you know, a one line, 
and then these three lines. So sort of a, a, an altered couplet, right? I It didn't feel right to me to have the four lines together. Uh, you know, it felt like there needed to be. And, and if you have a different interpretation, once I finish running through, I'm happy to hear that. So what's in that dark hiding place where the tattered remnants of your pride still gather themselves around your nakedness? Hmm. Now, I want you to look at these lines because you see the dash there? Mm -hmm. Right? He has that in the middle. But just like we don't read Shakespeare in pentamic, I am that, even though it's written that way. So to me, you gather the tattered remnants of your pride to know these rags as your only protection and yet still open. To face the possibility that your innermost core may hold nothing at all and to sing from that. I found so, that very powerful. Right? And, and it's, again, this is, I mean, it, these two bits are a line in the poem and these two bits are a line. So it doesn't quite fit with the couplet to sing from that, to fill the void with every hurt, every harm, every hard won joy that staves off death yet honors its coming. And then the end to sing both full I didn't italicize that. To sing both full and utterly empty, alone and conjoined, exiled and at home, to sing what people feel. And I mean, I guess you could do you could do that. To sing what people feel most keenly yet never acknowledge until you sing it. Anyone can sing. Yes. Anyone can sing. So to me, breaking it up into pieces made it a little bit more comprehensible. Now, I want to go back up. So the, the words that are in italics are verbs, are actions that those body parts take. And if you look at open, open your mouth, proclaim the soul, give the voice wings, Fill the body with echoes of voices and prize the heart wide open. And then there's lists of, of, uh, of, of verbs. And so I'd like us to spend a little bit of time uh, spitballing. And, and, you know, this is the time where everybody can and should be uh, unmuted if they would like. Um, what these different words mean to you? What do they mean to you as related to that particular body part? And um, and then we'll look at the the underlined sections where he enumerates what you're give what 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 you're giving voice to and and what the what are the echoes and so and and what are we filling with? So the, I I think those and these down here the colored ones are as we talked about in in rehearsal the the opposites that he chooses. Um, that are that are not necessarily your typical opposites that you would choose. So, you know, yeah, Claudia. Yes. Yeah, so this reminds me of this is what psychotherapy is about. This entire thing, mm. having the courage, going in there, going to the dark and the light and suffering and the tattered remnants. That is all psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And and. and I, you know, it sounded like what what triggered him to write this was not therapy, but well, he had gone, uh, you know, if he had a breakdown, then presumably yeah. he had therapy. But um, that experience, which had to be, I mean, you just think about standing on Shakespeare's stage mm -hmm. without a mic with 1500 people, just you, right? Presumably a spotlight. How much more powerful can your voice be? you know, yeah. in, in that situation. So, and, and I do think open your mouth. Uh, I don't remember who, Barb, I think it was you who said, I don't, sorry, I don't remember who said, you know, knowing that he he couldn't speak, that he couldn't swallow. That yeah. was you, Claudia. Okay, so to proclaim the soul. What, 
what is it what does it mean to proclaim announce announce i'm going to see what the dictionary calls it see this should be i i didn't look it up beforehand mm. Mm. announce officially or publicly is the official definition publicly right yeah okay so so how do you proclaim your go ahead ann I was just going to say it takes courage to do that. A yeah. lot of courage. Huge. Huge. I mean, turning yourself inside out, right? To proclaim the soul and to give the voice wings. Mm -hmm. It's a simple verb, right? To give. But mm -hmm. what does it mean to give the voice? Well. Wings of solitude, grief, and well, we'll solitude. get we'll get the wing. Yeah, but the, 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 those are the kinds of wings. But what I mean, if you say give the voice wings, you know, most of us are singers, where we pretty much know that the voice does not have wings, physiologically. Leslie, you were going to say something. I thought no. And then it disappeared. Okay. Uh. Well, let's do it this way. What associations does do wings have? It's like, it's like a letting go. Okay, I'm not sure I understand how you connect wings with letting go. Explain more. Um, flying away, sort of letting yourself take take off. Okay, so yeah, so you said you said flying away. You said take off. All of which is is associated with freedom. freedom. Yeah, Leslie. Yeah, I, I agree. Right, freedom to give your voice the freedom, and 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 sometimes we as women and we as older women, uh, maybe we we stifle our voices. Uh, maybe we don't say things because they'll it'll upset people or maybe they're not ready to hear our truth. So that freedom to let your voice say and fill the body with echoes of voices. I love that line. Fill the body with echoes of voices. To me, it's such a Jewish thing. Right. I mean. We have the voices. Oh, here's oh, Barb was bounced. There we go. Um, right. The, the 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 echoes of to me, it's echoes of voices of the past. But what other what other echoes? Sorry. What you know other what echoes uh, of where? So we're looking uh, at um, Barb, the, the body parts and the verbs. And so to fill the body with echoes of voices. So what voices do you have echoing in your body? Epigen epigenetic memories right now, especially thinking of yeah, Israel and what we carry. Yeah. Yeah. So I have yes, memories so many of things. Past. Wait, wait, Eileen? Yes, I'm sorry. I have memories of the past and those are echoes um that come quietly uh they're not shouted out you know they're yeah. they're part of behind behind the scenes yeah i think when we when we when we when we commemorate a yard site right, mm -hmm. right. Barb, barb what did you want to add i have like images of just so many different things family travel uh connections with people it, it's all it's all out there it's all yeah. sometimes yeah it's all it's, it's it's all in there and um yeah our our parents voices our children's voices our own voices at different times in our life and then to prize the reluctant heart wide open that's you know what does it say to you Why is the heart reluctant to open? Because it's hard. Because of all those feelings. It's hard. Okay. Um, 
so what about things that you bury it's also things that you don't you may not be happy about what you did or what you you know difficult parts in your life that you okay so discomfort discomfort right what else do we what else do we bury within pain the heart holds your emotions that it holds love fear pain just the next the next paragraphs down suffers yeah. it yeah yeah so what is he he wants us to open our hearts to witness suffer shrink lose go down retreat that's a heck of a series of of verbs mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. i mean uh, can you imagine, Claudia, anybody going to a therapist and the therapist yeah. says, here's what I'm expecting you to do. <laughs> we should go to your lowest place. <laughs> go to your lowest place. Right. And, and so it's helpful to know that he's speaking about it from a person who started at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. Got, we said, I mean, it, it, it kind of went by. I'm just going to, uh, I forgot that it's all connected. Um, right he um where is it so having oh. me my way through childhood neglect and abuse adult isolation breakdown recovery and eventual redemption i was ripe to appreciate the depth of the journey so the adult isolation uh i, I mean it i don't know when he had the surgery to repair his his mouth yeah um yeah. and 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 people you know i i don't i didn't see a, a birth year for him but he looks like that you know 60 to 75 somewhere somewhere yeah. in that in that range um people are cruel you know he is of our generation uh where where uh language Hurtful language is considered. We're we're watching reruns of ER, and uh, they hire you know a mentally handicapped guy, and uh, one of the lawyers says, "So the board is a go on your retardo." You know, so, uh, I, I mean, yeah. you know, hurtful language was was and and the Brits are certainly um, no no uh, no offense, Anne, because Americans aren't much better. Uh, but not not known for being kind to to people who have uh, disabilities. So he's been, you know, at the very, very bottom. He's and then there. once once you once you are there in that last dark hiding place where you have these tattered remnants of your pride, right? you're 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 like, can anybody possibly tolerate being with me if they knew all of this stuff about me? Mm -hmm. To know these rags as your only protection, there's nothing protecting you except those little bits of shreds and pieces to face the possibility that your inner and most core may hold nothing at all. Okay. And to and, think from that. You know? To, so yeah. so you know really the we, bottom uh, of depression well it, okay so maybe depression what about uh, um imposter syndrome <laughs> okay imposter yeah people think i'm so capable if they find out how much i you know how many mistakes i made they're going to know that i really you know um okay. and so face that there might be nothing there do you really think it's possible that there's nothing there at all in our innermost for anybody? No, but people often think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what we think about ourselves is becomes our lived reality. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting to think about why Andrea Ramsey decided to uh, take that line out. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. that's 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 the next huh. the next screen. <laughs> what she takes out. What oh, she yeah. out, you know what she takes out and um so you sing from that and from that void okay which is really and 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 it, we do lose that with the cuts in the music and and we'll see if we have time to um 
to go with the recording bit by bit and see if she makes it up. But that void is the, I think, is the, the void in your innermost core. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I think so too. And there's, there's nothing there. And I'm going to fill the void and we'll talk about what we're, this, this, this will, we will talk It's next. Hang on. We'll, we'll, we'll get here to what we're filling the void with. Um, to sing, here's the, the, the opposites, both full and utterly empty, alone and conjoined, exiled and at home. To sing what people feel most keenly, yet never not, acknowledge not until you sing it. Mm -hmm. I read. I just read. There's a, there's a, a, a an article in the New York Times. There's a gentleman who's doing uh, research about the relationship between Paul McCartney and John Lennon, and you know this new be this new old Beatles song that that came out yeah. now and then, uh, which he says is part of a long series of musical communications between Lennon and McCartney after the Beatles split up. And these are two young men who met uh, one, his mother just died and the other one's mother died several weeks after they met uh, in their, in their uh, mid to late teens um, in every, for every, in everything but genetics, they were brothers who, who underwent a, 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 a break. And uh, he quotes John Lennon as saying, speech is the slowest way of communication. Uh -huh. Right. Because people feel things. Sometimes you don't label it when you hear the music, but and you don't quite know why you're sitting there listening to this song and crying. And um, look how many posts we see now of images of the hostages or images from from Israel and the song choice. Send, I mean, the images are difficult in and of itself. Right, but the song choice sends sends us over the edge. So now, let's back up to here. My some of the underlined things and and uh, so he gives some lists of things, and and it struck me, you know, to give the voice broad son sonorous wings, not sonorous, sonorous. But he he does do an odd little action ac accent there on the nor. I can't quite. Repeat. So give the voice broad wings. We said freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Solitude, grief, and celebration. I, I, I find myself scratching my head at the choice of those things. So thought. One extreme to the other. Well, grief and celebration, but solitude... How do you get from, so I, I, why is solitude the first thing? To give you wings of solitude, broad son sonorous wings of solitude, grief and celebration. So, some of these, these places are the most like, okay, what well, is read the, the next line? Thing? If you read the next line, to fill the body with the echoes of voices lost, lost long ago, bravery and silence. So yeah. again, he's sort of fixated yeah. on that silence and solitude of solitude. Oh, the, ah, I like that. Okay, so you're saying uh, solitude connects with silence. Silence. The silence. Okay. You know, the loss connects with grief. Yeah. Well, there's no loss lost long ago to bravery and silence with the echoes of voices lost long ago to bravery and silence. Remember, we talked about the echoes of voices in our body, but we didn't talk about the kind that he's. So I, I, I mean, I, and, and when we sing it, you know, uh, I've, I've, I certainly not like that recording that we heard, which was, which was pretty emotionally, you know, I, I used to get, it gave me goosebumps when I first heard it. And then once we started working on it, it's like, okay, it's kind of, I mean, it does have the advantage of having the score. And so you can see the words, which is, which is helpful. Um, so I, I, I think the, the ending, ending with celebration, right. Is, is we first give voice 
to the fact that we are all alone. We're born alone. We die alone. We we connect with other people, but other, ultimately everyone is is in themselves alone. And grief, grief covers a multitude, right? Mm -hmm. It covers losses. It covers isolation. It covers, uh, um, oh, sorry, I lost the word. Um, tra personal tragedies, uh, you know, of 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 it mourning, you know. I mean, they're they're not they're not really synonyms, and you come out the other side because celebration gets in there too. That's mm -hmm. that's the best. I, Claudia, you wanted to add something, or you're no, just... uh, no. It's just like for me, sometimes solitude is grief, and knowing that I could come out on the other side is something I need to remember. Yeah. Some yeah. people use celebration as a way, you know, thinking of, uh, especially for Christians who have a loss and then they celebrate the life of the person. You know, they take the grief into a celebration of that person's life. And we yeah. just got invited to one the other yeah. day. And, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 And then we fill the body. So we talked about echoes of voices, but his. He's talking about voices lost long ago to bravery and silence. So silence and solitude, but voices of silence? I think it's death. Well, silence. Uh, sound of silence. Yeah, yeah. Sound of silence. So it's, it struck, you know, I we may not be able to... Um, tweak every every word and and get to the depths of it so um the other thing i wanted okay so we talked about this 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 thread here this list here of difficult verbs and then you know and yet you open anyway anyway yeah. no it's gonna be hard but you open anyway and you face the possibility how hard is it so often to face the possibility right you don't he's not even saying this might happen this is going to be but to face the possibility that it might be mm -hmm. and how often do we do we uh prefer to be in denial because a parent is going to live forever <laughs> my spouse is never going to get sick my kids are going to marry uh, the loves of their lives and live happily ever after and never have anything bad happen to them. Yeah. Right. right? So face the possibility and yet sing. Okay. It's also like facing an empty canvas to me, facing the white empty canvas. Yes. Yes. I think, I think probably for all creators, facing the empty canvas, facing yeah. the empty piece of paper. Yeah, paper that you want to write the book and you can't yeah. get the first yeah. word out. No more yeah. to get it out. It doesn't stop. Yeah. And so you face the possibility that you're empty and you're going to fill the void with what? Now, I would think I'm going to fill the void with happy melody, happy memories. No, he's going to put the okay. he's going to put the guy the garbage it, compactor. Is, he's going to put everything into it. Well, this is, go ahead, Anne. Sorry. This, I think it's an echo of solitude, grief and celebration. Mm -hmm. you gotta get off my keyboard cat um mm -hmm. where are you Anne? yeah um, she's looking, talk, looking at this line here every hurt up. every yeah. harm every hard won jo joy is an echo of solitude grief and mm -hmm. celebration good yeah, I, I, like, I like that i like that yeah i like that um i think though that that uh also Filling the void with hurt and harm, also very Jewish, right? <laughs> as we say, never again. As we say, you know, remember and repeat the stories. As we yeah. say, we were once slaves in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? What what other people in the world says, remember we were slaves and therefore. <laughs> And so we're going to take this, take this, and hear that staves off death, yet honors its coming. And Anne, I refuse to change the British spelling <laughs> that I put <laughs> on his website, even yeah. though Word is not happy about it. 
So, yeah. so we're filling the void, right? With all of these memories of hurts and harms, because most of them we learn from and we grow from. But I'm not sure where this staves off death and honors is coming. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do with that. Well, is it suicide? No. It's like, no, it's that. No, you still want to live, but yet you also realize eventually we are going to die. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. I think it's a recognition of death and also a, a, a pledge to fill the time, right? To make use of the, to, to honor the fact that we're mortal by filling ourselves, by filling our lives, by yes. making, you know, make the most be open in going in. And so um, let's take a look at these opposites. And actually, this should also be red. Well, it's also an opposite, staving off death and honoring its coming. Good. Good. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Stave off and yet honor. So, but... Yeah. Which so if if we're gonna call them, let's do them in purple. <laughs> uh, I love the colors. So did you not? You're like my oh. rabbi. Oh yeah. Um. So what's the opposite of stave off? Bring on. Bring, bring on, on right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So but he's not saying bring on death. He's just saying honoring, respecting it. Respecting, respecting it. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like respecting it. My father always used to say, respect the ocean. I grew up in Brighton Beach. <laughs> respect the ocean, know what you can do. Right. So full versus utterly empty. So is utterly empty really the opposite of full? What's the opposite of utterly empty? Empty. No, the opposite of uh, the opposite of utterly empty is. Overflowing. Full, completely full, Overflowing. right? Overflowing. Completely full. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The next one, he goes alone. So what is the opposite of alone? Together. Together. Together, right? Well, he uses and conjoined, he uses but you know, conjoined. So are we, you know, I think of them as uh, conjoined twins, you know. It's, it's, right. Yeah. That's what, right. Barb, I don't know if you were there when I said I treated conjoined twins um, when I worked at a hospital in Louisiana. I really? treated I treated the twin who had all of the defects when they were separated. Separated. Mm. And her sister who had, who was perfect committed suicide. Oh my gosh. So the oh, one God. I treated was just beyond depressed and angry. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So that that was that was uh depressing. Um <laughs> Well, when I whenever I see that word conjoined, that's what I think of. Yeah. So, are we ever conjoined? No. You hope not to be. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I this is this is blue. Here, put your face up. Anyway, um, so how about when we're pregnant? Hmm. It's true. And, and maybe, yeah, maybe when we're singing, we're all singing together. Yeah, well, certainly as, as a choir where, right, yeah. where each as one becomes yes. subsumed into into yeah. the whole. So maybe as, uh, as, as, a, as a person who has suffered abuse as a young, bo young boy, uh, thinking about being alone versus being in his mother, being... Well, he said he was neglected as a child. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm well, just he, wondering whether the word, the choice of the word is more, you know, Typical. He, he's from Wales originally. Whether that would be just a word that would be more used. No, I don't. In the yeah. UK or. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think so. And I. I did a little bit of looking at this. Uh, I think there are certain sounds that that he likes. Um, I know that. So, so for example, at the beginning, there's a lot of S's. Anyone can sing. You can give shape to a sound. Anyone can sing. It's mm -hmm. harder to proclaim the soul. Um, but I didn't really find any consistency. But I do know oh. that I've read. Yes, Anne. I was just going to say you've got joy in a couple of lines before. 
you and go. then you've got conjoined. So it's so, kind of an internal right. rhyme. Yeah, and and I think you know poet poem. Libby. From what I've read about uh, poets, you know, they often sit and go through lists and lists and lists of words, uh, looking mm -hmm. for just the right one that may resonate and they may not know exactly why. I compare it, uh, Claudia and I've done this exercise uh, in, in a museum, you know, where you go and, and it, whether it's a realistic painting or, or a, an abstract painting, and there's just a little splash of color somewhere, and you're like, why is that there? And then you cover That's it right. over and you see that, you know, and something in the artist's sensibility said. Especially the Clifford Stills out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. I, just, I just need that little yeah. bit right. of orange there. I'm not sure why, but that's what and and all of a sudden it pulls it together yeah. okay and so then what's the opposite of home at home away 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 but he has so, exiled that has such a negative connotation again yeah back to the jewish sensibility right he's not <laughs> i'm reading into it but exiled so what 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 connotations does exiled have you can't go home you're, you you're forced go to be away. You can't go home. You're you. You have no choice, right? right. It's imposed it's, upon it's what's you. What's done to you? What, it's what done. What's done to you? You know, he has right. like exaggerations on each of these. You know, the full and utterly empty, and the alone and the conjoined. It's not just you're together, but you're stuck together. Yeah. Um, the exiled, uh, and at home. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there i don't i don't think we can get to the complete bottom of of where he was going with this um you know part very of, deeply um, emotional on this i can see it's that. very very deep this is a very very personal poem okay so i'm going to go here and so what i did is i went through the score and i highlighted it, everything that's highlighted in red is, is what he cut there. out right yeah i wanted you to do that yeah Right. And um, I'm I'm happy to share this whole document with you if if that's what you want. Uh, if anybody, well, that's what I was trying yeah. to just uh, save the link to get the poem, and it, I lost I lost it's you. I hear you. Oh oh, you you're. I had tried to open it and save it, and it, it, okay. I heard you, but I couldn't get the picture back. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I yeah. It's a different computer than the one I, I put it back in. If it's, it's just William dot com. Yeah, and, and you can find everything there. So yes. let's go through it. And I'm going to give you a time for each line that's missing to say it silently in your head. Okay. And mm -hmm. she says any I'm I'm giving her the the giving her the the grace that the two anyone can sings at the beginning was the title and the and the anyone can sing. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. at the end, this 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 bold is is the boards in bold. She added everything in red. She subtracted. Okay. Right. Okay. Anyone can sing. You just open your mouth and give shape to a sound. Anyone can sing. What is harder is to proclaim the soul. Wow. Well, I mean, you to give the voice broad, sonorous wings of solitude, grief, and celebration. To prize the reluctant heart wide open. To witness defeat, suffer contempt, shrink, lose face, retreat to the last dark hiding place the tattered remnants of your pride oh she cut that next line out yeah mm -hmm. to know these rags as your only protection and yet still open mm -hmm. and sing from that and sing to fill the void and sing with every hurt every harm Every hard won joy that staves off death yet honors its coming, to sing both full and utterly empty, alone and conjoined, 
exiled and at home. Mm -hmm. Anyone can sing. Anyone can sing. Yes, anyone can sing. So undoubtedly, you know, she cut some of these things because mm -hmm. they were just too, it was just too long. Uh -huh. and, and some of these uh, might be, you know, harder to sing. But it I makes think, it, it, it makes it more coherent. Yeah, I think, I think the big one for me that, that would help a lot with comprehension, come on. What's going on? <laughs> Is that your cat? <laughs> it was my cat. Yeah. No. No, maybe. I don't know. I can't move my thing. Um, no. It's not. Okay. I'm in Zoom. It's jumping around. Here. Uh, this word, where, is to missing. To retreat to the last dark hiding place. Yeah, where the where the tattered remnants? Where are the pride. tattered remnants of your pride? Well, she didn't because she no, doesn't she didn't still gather. She, yeah, right. So, to me, when we when you know, if you don't look at the whole poem, which uh, afterwards, if you look in your score in the notes at the beginning, the whole poem is there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but but the tattered remnants of your pride to know these rags as your only protection. I mean, I, I'm with, I'm, I, something here in the transition makes it a little challenging for mm -hmm. me, uh, in those choices. And I think we're not going to be able to do a line by line with the recording because we've been going an hour already and yeah. I want to respect your time. And I do want to play for you the recording that's on uh, Mr. Ayat's uh, website, which is an actual choir. But uh, the only thing I wanted to add is these ands. How is and sing different to and to sing? I mean, she wanted to get rid of that syllable, the syllable, right? But I think this is where the singer, the music person, right? And mm -hmm. sing and sing and sing. And remember what we sing on that, right? We have, we have that beautiful high uh, yeah. major chord, widespread major chord that just um, soars. So mm -hmm. me, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can get back to the, um, the mm -hmm. website for the other recording. Um, anything else anybody wants to add at this point before we go listen to that? Mm -mm. Okay. It's a great poem, right? Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. In a very somewhat dark place. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. but it's, but it's not about the dark place. It's about getting, so it's out, getting out of the dark uh, place, how, getting yeah. out of the dark place and how music helps you do that can help you do that. All right, so I'm afraid if I, on this computer, when I, oop, that's not what I wanted. I was trying to make this window bigger, but I don't think it makes the video window any bigger, no. So if I put it in full screen, um, it disconnects the shape, I don't know. I, okay, we'll just put it on, yeah. Just put it on. Thank you. 
So much more satisfying. So nice. Yeah. Very and good. did you did you notice that even they didn't get all that closing consonants weren't always completely yes together? yeah and you know that place where before and sing to fill the void right and she's got everything connected and then let it and there's a there's supposed to be no but they made a break and did and sing as well as us because where are they located it says Lansing so I'm guessing guessing Michigan oh, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Yeah. there is there more than one Lansing in the United States I don't I don't think I don't so know. is an East it's Lansing well no, that's in Michigan. Michigan too yeah it's also yeah. Michigan yeah uh, no I, I I thought it was it was very pretty yeah um, I was gonna Thank say you. something and I can't think I'm trying to think what it was that I don't know. It makes me feel better singing the song, knowing more about it. Did yeah. he have input into the music? I do not think he had any input into the music. I uh, did not ask Andrea. I'm happy to write her and ask her whether she needed his permission to cut lines. That's what However, I was it's very it's very typical yeah. for many composers who set poetry to pick bits and pieces and yeah. well, we've um, seen you know, that in the Hebrew ones that we've done. I wonder yeah. if he's heard the heard the music. This is on his website. Oh it is. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was originally yeah. wondering whether it was from yeah. the UK, but yeah. It sounded too American. No, but then notice the born and the, the R's that were not there. Did you notice the R's born. That were yeah. All right. Well, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but no yay, problem. we made it. 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 Yay. Hopefully my computer is, is back. And yeah. uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Great next program. Month, uh, wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Really interesting. Uh, Thursday. December, December, Mimi is doing uh, uh, Bleeding Men of Broadway. Oh, so uh, Who is she doing? Do you know? She's doing she's Al Jolson and Bert Lahr. Oh, that's we, right. She missed the bell, yeah, Joseph, we, before, so she's yeah, doing well. So it was, it was like uh, the day, uh, the day after, or or a week after the the war yeah. came out. Um, yeah. if, if, you know, life as we know it, the world 